I wanna do a segment today about traditional boots and modern boots and all of them in between. We got this scale here. Look at this nice tradition, oop, traditional. Here I gotta learn my weatherman shit. Got it, the traditional over here and the modern over here, right? So we're gonna break down the characteristics of the traditional and what makes a boot traditional and what makes a boot modern. That's what we're gonna do right now, so let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya And then I'll be on my way What makes a boot traditional over here? and what makes a boot modern made. That's what we're gonna talk about right now and then everything in between because it's not just like it's either modern or traditional. You guys know that there's things in between here. So I'm gonna go through some characteristics of the traditional first, then I'm gonna do the modern and then I'm gonna do some characteristics of maybe some maybe a boot that's in the middle or cover some brands that are like right in the middle that use some modern things but also have a lot of traditional aspects about them too so in order to do that first we need to cover what a traditional boot is actually like and because this is a hondo giveaway event right now and if you guys are just joining and you didn't know that I did giveaways, then you gotta subscribe because it's not like this is unusual. I'm gonna use the Hondo. I'm gonna use the Hondo. Boom, there's the Hondo icon. As if we, as if I needed it. Here we go, it's like, there's the magic of it all, boom. <laughs> so we got the Hondo icon. What makes Hondo boots traditionally made. Let's go over that right now. Traditional boots are mostly, if not all, leather, except for like the shank or the rubber heel cap, maybe the the spur, uh, the spur shelf right here. Um, the spur shelf, you guys can't see that. The spur shelf might not be all leather, but pretty much everywhere, leather. Inside too, because just like all of you guys at home, the boots, the inside counts. It's more important. <laughs> you guys are all beautiful. And the inside of traditional boots, the inside of traditional boots are beautiful too. Why is that? Because they have all leather lining all the way through and that hard leather insole that a lot of people are like, wow, that's kind of shocking. That's kind of hard in there. I'm not, it kind of feels like I'm standing on cement, but it forms to your foot and it feels amazing. Uh, another thing about the traditional construction is that it has a leather heel counter. So in here, you have leather, hard leather, just like what you have on the outsole, but sort of wrapped around the back of the heel to keep this upright, right? So that's what traditional boots use and it helps the structure of the entire boot. It's a very traditional way to do it. Of course, you also have the Goodyear welt here, which is the stitching on the outside here, and you can see it come through down here. And uh, of course, that allows you to get the boot resold, and it's also channeled. It's the insole underneath on the inside is channeled so that they sew the welt through that channel. And it's kind of a hard process to do, which is why a lot of traditional boots are more expensive than modern made or semi-traditional boots that are made nowadays. And if you guys wanna see what a tradition, what a channeled insole looks like, it looks like this, okay? And I'm gonna get this arrow going here. So as you can see here, you see those little lines on the inside. So what they did, and this is the BNV boots uh, from the recent collab that sold out that I did with BNV boots. You can see here that Jose, at BNV Boots, uh, carved a channel into the leather insole on the underneath side here. You can see it wrap all the way around, right? And then what they do is they sew the welt into that channel. So this welt here is where the sole is sewed onto the boot. So a channeled welt right here, a channeled insole where that welt comes through that is very important to the traditional make. It's, it's like one of the things that separates, it's one of the separating features that would put a boot 
all the way, all the way over here on the traditional scale. So you need that channeled, uh, you need that channeled insole for a completely traditional boot. But let's go the other side of it now, right? Let's let's head on over to the modern end of things, you know? Uh, or should we cover what some traditional boots are? So of course you do have the Hondos here. That's traditional. Uh, some other traditional boots are Blackjack, uh, Lucchese, Heritage boot, like the BNV boot, uh, and you know, those are all very traditionally made boots. And they do run a little bit more on the expensive side because they are a process to make. Uh, and you, of course, if you guys want to know where you can get traditionally made boots, you can get them, including Hondos, at cartersboots.com over in Bozeman, Montana. Gotta love the folks at uh, carters.com. They're selling men's and women's boots. Uh, both the western style and other types of work boots uh, you can see here is the hondo 3416 without the spur shelf and you can save 10 percent on your order through cartersboots.com using my code jeremiah craig at checkout huge thanks to hondo boots and cartersboots.com for making this possible so now that we covered the traditional side of things over here let's go on over to the modern ends of things and see what a modern boot is like what would what would be over here on the way 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 modern side i would say it would be a boot like the ariat right this ariat bantam weight boot is about as modern of a process as you can get and the reason why Ariat boots are so modern, <clears throat> modern made. Oh my goodness, they're falling. Um, they're, see, where's my thing here? They use aspects of the athletic shoe industry, like Reebok. In fact, the founder of Ariat, Beth Cross, used to work at Reebok. And she left there to make the athletic type sort of Western boot uh, with the athletic quality of Reeboks. She wanted actually to make it at Reebok, but they said, no, we're really not into Western boots. So she left and started Ariat so that she could make uh, modern type boots with the quality and uh, athletic features that sneakers do. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool and opened a whole new market up for Western wear. Now let's cover some of the things that uh, would make a boot more modern built. On the inside, you got a mesh or a cloth lining. So on the inside of this here uh, Ventec boot, uh, you do have mesh. You can even see the mesh on the outside because they have it They have it so that you can breathe a, a little bit of airflow in there. You also have a removable foam insole a lot of times, uh, similar to what you would get like in a sneaker or something. And then also, you're going to get a composite heel most of the time so whether it's a, a plastic heel or you could maybe get a rubber heel or maybe a bonded leather I would say that that's kind of a composite not so traditional but uh, bonded leather is is uh, is definitely a good option at the same time uh, it's also using more of a cement construction so you can see here that it does have like stitching on the outside of the welt here, but it's not, it's just there for, for fashion reasons, just for looks, uh, because there's really nothing coming through here on the bottom. And uh, Ariat, they, they're, they're not ashamed of that, it's just a different way to make a boot. It's pretty much all cement construction uh, here, holding the sole onto the rest of the boot. And it has an athletic shoe outsole a lot of times. This is very, light this is a bantam weight very i think that this makes so much sense that beth cross used to work at reebok and then makes ariat and makes a bantam weight boot it feels so much like a sneaker it's not even funny it makes so much sense that she used to work at reebok when you try a bantam weight area it's 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 crazy it's crazy how similar they are to those athletic type uh sneakers and shoes 
The only problem with that is that they usually can't be resold or they're much more difficult to resold. So some cobblers might not even take aerates altogether. It's more of a factory process, which usually makes the more modern made boots cheaper. And uh, like I said, on the, uh, on the scale here, we have Ariats there. Laredo is one that, that does that. Durango does that a lot. And so does Twisted X. Those are four uh, brands that use a lot of modern methods when making their boots. What about in the middle? Cause we gotta, cause not all boots like are on opposite ends of things, right? Where would a boot like Tacova's land? I think it lands boom, right in the middle. I think it has some traditional qualities here and some modern qualities. So let me show you here what it looks like in the middle slide. So in the middle, uh, you know, it looks kind of like it could be a traditional boot on the outside, like kind of like these Los Altos here. Let's use the Los Altos as an example. It looks like it can be a traditionally made, boot. like it looks beautiful. It's got the leather sole, it's got pegs and nails down here. Um, not so sure if it has a leather counter or not. I don't think it does, uh, but it does have a leather lining. And then for an insole, you don't have a hard leather insole. Instead, what you have is a non-removable foam insole a lot of times. Some of them will also have removable foam insoles, but most of the time you'll have a non-removable foam insole that has a leather lining on the top. I like to call those soft leather insoles. So uh, they're, they're really comfortable. It's like a nice in-between if you don't really like the removable foam insoles and the hard leather traditional is a little bit too hard for you. So some, something in the middle works for a lot, a lot of folks because it's comfortable but you always, but you also feel the leather feeling on the inside. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and another thing that makes them in the middle is that they have some plastic parts on the inside. Sometimes it could be the welt. Sometimes it could be the heel counter. Sometimes it could be the heel itself. Like uh, these Abilene's back here, uh, they look pretty much all uh, leather. If I can grab those for an example, all leather and then just the plastic heel, right? Uh, so. It could be many different things that would put a boot in the middle like that. They still do have the, the Goodyear welt construction, but instead of using the channeled insole method, they use like this hard cloth rib construction that's better and easier for factories. And I could show you guys what that looks like. So I went to the Los Altos factory in 2019 and I can show you guys here it is, the cloth rib. As you can see here, the cloth rib runs on the outside of this insole, and then they'll sew the welt to that, which is better and easier than it is for a channeled insole. It's just faster. Um, the only problem with that is that it may not be able to be resold as many times. It still can be resold, but maybe just not as many. And then here is a video from uh, the Tacovas factory on the Tacovas uh, on the Tacovas YouTube channel, and you can see here it has that cloth rib there that is going to make it faster and more affordable for you with their factory method. So. Tacovas, I say, would be in the middle someplace, along with boots like Los Altos, right? Los Altos, uh, Boulet is one that has boots in the middle. They have boots all across. Like, I got a, a pair of Boulet that is made really, really traditionally, and of course, I got to, uh, I got a chance to check out the Challenger, which is made in a little bit more modern way. So, uh, Boulet runs the gamut. Uh, Ruho would be right in the middle. JRC and Sons would be right in the middle. So uh, that semi sort of traditional modern is definitely another feel that uh, that is is great. And there's nothing wrong with any of them. You know, some people are like are gonna like the traditional build. 
and that hard leather insole because it forms to your feet. Some people are gonna like the more modern build because it has more of a feeling of the athletic shoes that they're used to wearing. And some people are gonna like it right in the middle because you get the comfort of the more modern uh, boots, but the look of the more traditional boots and the fact that you can get them resold at the same time. So it's all about what you want. Uh, and that's why I wanted to make this so that you could figure out what you like and to help you find more of the same of what you do like. Uh, what do you guys think? I did ask you guys in the, uh, in the giveaway sign-up sheet about what you want. And of course, you can expect the results to be skewed since this is a traditional boot giveaway. So over 70% of you who entered this giveaway like the traditionally built boots the best. And then around a quarter of you, or just over a quarter of you, said, you know, I like, I like pieces of both worlds. I like that soft leather insole, right? It's, it's, it feels really nice on, on, on my feet, on these old dogs over here. And then 1% uh, of you said that you like the modern built boots the best. So you got to take this with a grain of salt because, of course... <laughs> It is for a traditional boot giveaway, so only people who are going to want the traditional boots are going to enter, <laughs> for the most part. So definitely not scientific, but interesting nonetheless. What do you guys think? It's nice to know the difference between the many grades, from the modern build to the traditionally made. So now you know what you're walking in each and every day. How to get more of the same Yeah One of the hardest things to do is Figure out what you like So when you know what you like It's nice to stick with it, right? <laughs> yes